Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to to talk about polymer and how, how can we use polymer in the, in, in which applications. I come from I come from Spain. I work for Badin, and we are researching a lot uh, in web components. So I'm going to talk about my experience. The agenda for the for the speech is basically is motivations about why to use web components, what are the web components, what is Polymer, something about JS Interop, because we are using JS Interop for uh, wrapping Polymer, uh, how to consume web components with WIT, and introducing the WIT Polymer Elements library, and also a demo if we had enough time for a full stack with application using Polymer and REST services in the cloud. Uh, the motivations about this is because, uh, yeah, the, the problem in, in, in formal, former with development is that uh, it's very verbose. This is some code for, from a, a project is MGWIT. So uh, normally we were, uh, developing UIs directly in Java, creating <coughs> DOM elements or doing a lot of uh, stuff in Java, which is very slow in debugging. It's not uh, stable. Designers in general hate Java. They hate as well UI binders because they prefer J uh, JavaScript and, and, and HTML. And also it's almost impossible to share with other frameworks and other modules, in, even in WIT. And it's, WIT is not mobile friendly. We don't have all the events in, in, in mobile. And we don't have uh, showcases for, for, for mobile. Uh, the widget set in WIT is ugly. Everyone knows about it. And uh, using WIT and web components, we are going to use a standard UI specification there are ready-to-use catalogs in the Polymer uh, Elements catalog, and it is an active development. So Polymer is developed by Google, and Barin is creating new web components as well. Uh, with Classic versus with Polymer. So this is a, a screenshot you can click there in the presentation. This is the application I am going to show today. I did the application coming from Spain in the, in, the, in the flight. And it is only 700 li lines of code. And this is the, the GWT mobile application, the cloud task, traditional mobile application in the, in the GWT sources. It, it has about 6,000 and a half lines of code. Uh, the vision of Vadin about web components. So Vadin had all the web components developed, uh, all the WIT just set developed in Java with WIT. So what Badin is doing is we are creating new web components or new widget set based on web components. So the framework, the framework is going to continue in the same time, in the same way. And you are going to type Java in the, in, in the server side and everything happens in the, in the browser. So we also we support GWT API in our web components. And also even we are going to parse web components in, in Java server side. So everything is happening in the research team in, in, in Bali. Uh, so do you know about web components? Who, who has uh, used web components before? Yes, Julian. Uh, OK, so web components, <laughs> what is? Let's, uh, let's expose the problem, right? When you have a UI made with different components, like weak components or everything, or even with a jQuery plugins, what happens is when you change the body background, everything changes, right? It's not, you, you, you can create a new web component and the component is uh, it's not going to, 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 to look similar or identically when you uh, develop it at the beginning. So web components try to isolate your web component and behave and look exactly the same, although the, the user changes 
something in the, in the application, right? So they do that with uh, Shadow DOM or Shady DOM as well. Uh, web components, what it allows is you can encapsulate your widget. So it's isolated for the rest of the world and you can put it in the, in the browser. Also, you can compose. You can get different web components and create a bigger web components. It's like in Wid, we can create widgets, but we cannot isolate from the CSS or the host, host page, right? And there is a big community creating good quality web components. Uh, the state of the art of web components is that the, it's a big activity so there is a web, webcomponents.org, plenty of libraries and uh, it's, it's stories and use cases. And also if you search in Polymer, maybe you, this is old, but I think this morning it was 7,000 projects with the word Polymer inside. <coughs> web components is about uh, 4,000. And if you look for width, it's just 4,000 as well. So it, we are smaller than Polymer. So, yeah. Um, the browser support is a big problem in web components because Chrome supports all, all the specification. The specification is custom elements, HTML imports, templates, and shadow DOM. Custom elements is that you can create new elements like table. You can create V table, for instance, is your your implementation of table or whatever you want to create. Uh, it works in uh, only in two web uh, browsers. In Firefox, it's, it's working or they are work in progress, etc. Right? And uh, HTML imports, it's going to, to work in all the browsers, etc. But it's not a big problem because there is something called polyfill. Who knows about polyfill? Yeah, I think all of you know about polyfill because we are, we are using polyfill everywhere in the web. So when you use, for instance, jQuery, jQuery has an API for, for transversing the DOM and they implement the same transversing the DOM in, or the same, uh, the same function, functionality in different browsers in different way. So a polyfill is kind of the same. Also permutations in, in, in WIT are polyfills. So it's, you, WIT offers to you an a API for a functionality and then implement in different ways in different browsers. Well, polyfill is kind of the same, but what they, uh, the API that they offer is one a, a standard API, for instance, Maybe query selector all. If some browser is not able to 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 have this uh, or to handle this uh, API functionality in JavaScript, what they do is uh, emulate this functionality in in the browser with JavaScript. So having the the Polymer platform has a polyfill and it supports all browser or all green browsers from i11. What's Polymer? So Polymer makes easier to and faster to create anything, uh, anything you you can imagine, imagine as a web component. So for pol for Polymer, a web component is not only a visual component, but also can be something like a connection with the database. So you can you can write a tag in your document, and this tag is a AJAX request or whatever you can imagine, right? So Polymer is kind of a library and a library who allows you to create web components in JavaScript in, in a fast way and also what they have is a lot of uh, a lot of uh, production ready and reusable components also they have a good documentation system even in the components so you can parse the components and generate whatever you want from there so let's take advantage of the JS in, uh, ecosystem in in GUID. So this is the, the way that GUID is working on. So uh, Julian has talked about uh, JS Interop. So everything is going to JS Interop. Um, the Polymer catalog is 
huge. You have uh, iron elements, which are the core elements that you can use, like uh, touch events, etc. Then you have animation in neo neon elements. Paper elements is material design specifications. And also you have budding elements. We have only one component, but it's a big component. It's the grid. And we're working in two more components. They are going to be released in the next weeks. And at the end, we, we will have also a lot of components missing in the, in the, in the polymer. So what's uh, JS Interop? So the nowadays, with big project, it, projects interact with JS library. So who of you uh, are using external library with your project? Yeah, most of you are using JS query. Probably you are using more, or you are using some library who relies in, 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 in uh, external. JS uh, library. So JS needs a bad option for complex scenario. It's complex to write. And JS Interop is doing the magic for, for natively in interact with, with JS. Elemental 2.0 is not here, but it's not in 2.8. It's necessary, so I am going to talk it later. And also code generation. So Google is working in Elemental 2.0 and also in some code generation, at least for generating the Elemental 2.0 or for parsing TypeScript specification, etc. How do we consume web components in, in Java? So basically what we have to do is uh, create the interfaces for all the, the, the components in JS Interop. Sorry, in uh, Elemental, okay? The, all the, for instance, the window object, the HTML element, etc. Uh, also, we need some utility methods. We have to define uh, and annotate Java interfaces for each component and optionally, optionally wrap each element in, in a widget if we want to, to use classic approaches in WID. Uh, Interfaces for native JS objects is kind of this. Uh, Julian has shown also something related with this. So at the end, you have the age, for instance, the element, and you, you can annotate get inner HTML. This is using the, the all JS interop specification. So we are changing the specification these weeks, and still in this, in this slide, I am using all the specification. Uh, you, can, you have to create reusable methods. So we have created in, in Vadin the Polymer class, which has a lot of utility methods, like ensure HTML import or create element, etc. And also, this is the, the important thing. So each web component has to have its own interface. So just annotating the web component and figure out what methods and what properties are exposed in the web component, you can create this. <laughs> there are thousands of, of classes of web components in Polymer catalog, so it's kind of difficult to create all of them. But yeah, we are going to, to, to see this. Uh, and also, uh, this is the way we consume the, the last interface. So we have this interface is paper button. So what we do is Polymer create paper button element. In the next specification of Polymer, you can create a new class, yes, new class if you use native uh, uh, annotations. And also, then you use all the, all the public methods in the component. You can add event listeners, and you can append. This is append. Uh, the child to the to your document or whatever you have in the in the DOM, and also you can create you can wrap this element with a, uh, a widget. So we are going to create widgets for all web components in our libra library, and basically we are extending Polymer widget instead of widget, but it's something. It's because we are extending the HTML panel so as we can. Uh, pass uh, the content of the of the of the web component <coughs> of the light DOM to it. 
okay? And this is the way for consuming a web component. It's the traditional way in which is paper button is a widget, new paper button, and then you add a click handler. So we are creating click handler or event handler for all the events in the in the Polymer library, and then you add it uh, as in the in the traditional way. Uh, also, you can consume web components. In the, in, in the UI binder. So you can use the, the Polymer Elements widget with the traditional annotation, okay, and set, the, uh, set all the properties that it exposes, but also you can use in the, uh, yes, as an as element. So, yeah, the advantage of doing that is that uh, Polymer. Uh, our Polymer library is going to take care of imports, but if you use this, you have to put the imports in your host, hosted pa page. And so let's introduce the with, the value with Polymer. So with Polymer elements, it's a library, a ready to use library for using Polymer elements, right? We include in the, in the, in the bundle iron, Elements, paper elements, which is material design uh, widget, neon, which is uh, all the animations, and batting elements, just the grid from batting, but it also it's a, a, a good web component, a complex web component. So what we d d did at the beginning was to create the Wit API generator. So the Wit API generator is a project able to. Uh, to create the, the width wrappers for the JS components. All this code that we have been uh, seeing in the, in, the last, in the previous slides. So what it does is it is able to scrape source documentation in, in Polymer elements. So it actually it uses JavaScript or JavaScript libraries that Polymer team has for creating the documentation in, in their website. So we are using exactly the same tools, but then we, we use these tools for uh, using some templates and create the, the Java classes. So uh, what we are using is Node.js. I guess most of you know about Node.js. Who knows about Node? Yeah, quite. Uh, NPM. NPM is the package system or package management of Node.js, so Node.js is just a, a runtime, JavaScript runtime in the command line, or not for browser, but for systems. Bower, who knows about Bower? Okay, Bower is a kind of a package system for web, for web, not web components, but everything that you can add in to your page. And Gulp is something like a Maven for, uh, for JavaScript. So we use hydrolysis. Hydrolysis parser comes from the Polymer team and large templates. And yeah, that's the two libraries that uh, we have. We, we have released just yesterday one to one alpha one using Polymer one to one, which was released last week or two weeks ago. And Oh, something is missing here. Yeah. Oh, good. So this is a, basically this is the how is uh, uh, with Polymer elements. We have all the all the widgets for all the components. Also, we have all the element implementation for uh, for all the components in the Polymer collection. Then we use JS Interop for interacting with uh, with a native. JavaScript, so Polymer.js and each component has its <coughs> own HTML file. And everything happens because of the WIT API generator. So we parse Polymer and generate WIT. So basically, you can install the WIT API generator just running npm install the WIT API generator minus global if you want to have it in your class path, sorry, in your path, in your system. Then you install any element in the web, like you can install all, all the paper elements and with Bower. 
And then running the, the GWT API generator, you can specify to generate a POM file if you want to use Maven, also your group ID and the artifact ID. And then you, you run Maven clean install and you produce your package.jar. So this package.jar is pr already produced by Vadin, so you can get it from Maven and you have everything there from Polymer. But maybe you, you, can use, you want to use this for uh, wrapping any custom element that, you can, you, that is not in the library, right? Uh, so with Polymer elements, you use it just adding the, the, the dependency to your project as usual, inheriting this uh, element uh, uh, module, and then you create the element as usual with document get create element. And uh, for using new elements, or you can create paper slider directly you want a uh, widget, and then everything is contained in the, in the artifact. OK. So the goals of having the GWT API generator is that uh, it's very light code, only 1,000 and a half lines of code, 100 kilobytes is the project. But it produces about 50,000 lines of code wrapping all the paper and core elements. Uh, it uses JS parser, so we are not maintaining any parse for, for those. And uh, also, we are using the same tools that Polymer does. And finally, uh, we are using a standard tool for web developers. So in theory, uh, developer Normally, front-end developers are able to install any component from the web using Bower, and they can run the GWT generator and give the library directly to Java developers, to GWT developers, and you have not to worry about that. So in theory, that's nice. So from now, what's OK, I think I'm running. So we are going to demo the chat application. So basically, the chat application I did and I am going to demo is a normal chat application where you can type messages in your mobile or in your desktop, and you get the messages in the, in the screen. And it is composed by GWT, of course, Polymer. I'm going to use PatchDB and CatchDB. Who knows about? PatchDB or CouchDB? CouchDB and who knows about MongoDB? OK, MongoDB, CouchDB is, the, is, is, a, is similar, to, uh, CouchDB is similar to MongoDB. It's a non-SQL database. But it is, everything is JSON. And everything is HTTP, <coughs> HTTP. So you can basically, I have here. The full stack solution, everything is open source. PatchDB is a database inspired in Apache CatchDB. CatchDB is a database that completely embraces the web, so store the data in JSON, access via HTTP, and it, it is able to serve pages directly. So what PatchDB has done is uh, Copying the CouchDB specification, they are able to create the same database but in JavaScript. So PouchDB can be run in the browser directly. It's a lightweight database that can be run in the in the in the browser. So you can you don't ha have to change your code using PouchDB and CouchDB when you go, go to the uh, to your backend. And also it has mechanism for uh, synchronizing. So you can be offline and everything works, and when you go online, everything works uh, out of the box, OK? It's a good solution, I think. So let's demo. I'm going to
so the final demo is something like this. If the okay, the network works. And it's going to the web. So if you put that in your mobile, it should work. And we can talk with the application. Um, <coughs> I'm running the application in dev mode, in super dev mode, sorry. And the application should be here. So the application, what we have in the application is just uh, an empty application. We have the chat application, which adds a new main. The main has nothing on it, and we have a main UI binder with nothing on it. If we load this in our browser, yeah, here, nothing happens. So we have an empty page, but no errors in the console. Let's go. So we are add, adding the GUID elements Let's refresh this. And here we have added the dependency to the elements, polymer elements. Also, we have in the POM the dependence to the <coughs> Yeah. We have this dependence. And finally, we have something in the in the main UI. So we have added these name name spaces for using widget for from there. So if if we reload the application, nothing happened, but we shouldn't have any error. Yeah, we don't have any error. Let's go to the next step. Setting up the drawer panel, right? So, in the in Polymer, they have something that they call a drawer panel. Is this panel in the at the left that you it is hidden and you can show it clicking here. And so the whole thing is called uh, drawer panel. So we have added a drawer panel to our UI. And basically, what we have done is uh, we have <laughs> added this uh, to our UI, by, uh, UI uh, this, uh, binder file, right? And we don't have anything in the main yet. But we have those elements. So when we reload the application, if it works, I guess. We have those panels, right? They are hidden, but they work. If we, <coughs> so let me. So we have this, the panel, and probably we can do that, but it's in there. So let's go forward, and the next step is to see something else. So adding elements to toolbars and if when it finished what we have is we have our drawer panel and now we have two paper header panels. One is for the left and another is for the right. In the left we have a toolbar with some images and also some divisions. And in, at the right, we have another toolbar with buttons. And <coughs> so let's reload this. Da, 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 da. Yeah. We have the same UI than before, but with some stuff. So we have added, for instance, this button, able to open the, the site menu. And basically, this button is here. So what it, we did is. Create a p paper icon button. You can create anything that is it's able to handle clicks events. And if when you set the proper this property, it works at, as a it polymer 
promotes it for to to open the site menu and <coughs> polymer is able to hide it when it's not needed so also the next step is to to do something with the panels so adding a menu to the left container so in the left container so we had the toolbar right and now we have a menu. So the menu, in the menu we have some items, a couple of items. So we have an item for inbox and an item for social. Also we have an icon for each of those items. If we reload the application, we have these two items. So as you see, we are creating an UI and we are not using right now any uh, business called here any Java right but it works so you have buttons nothing happens with buttons but it works so next step is to add in a mock message to the right container so as we can see how it looks so basically in the right container we have created a division and we have to put the class cont uh, sorry the class uh, fit in order to fill all the space so these are there are many classes in, in in the in the polymer specification so you have to read about the layout in, in, in polymer but it's very simple because adding classes everything <coughs> works right so when we reload our application we have a message but it's a hard coded message here no more messages but one here okay the next step so as you can see we have for instance the paper paper material is this box with some shadow we have uh, an icon with a star so this this icon etc let's go forward and we are now we are going to go to the Java and we are going to change the nickname and uh, the avatar so this is probably you are able to do that because what we have done here is that in this button uh, ta, 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 where is the button okay we have added this I don't know why the field is new thread but and in the main Java we have added some stuff basically what we have added is the uh, the new thread so uh, the new thread has a new event listener for opening a uh, dialogue where is the dialogue the dialogue is in our oh. let's refresh ah sorry it's the seat is this okay so this is the this is the main the main UI we are we are having in our uh, in our application and this is the dialog. The dialog is hidden, but you you create the dialog using just uh, HTML elements, and we have the UI f field <coughs> nickname dialog, and also we have something like. Um, uh, input nickname input so when we go to the Java main Java we have the new thread is going to open the dialog and also we are sorry what's happening we are adding an event listener to the dialog itself so when I don't overlay close it event happens if it is confirmed we uh, we get the nickname value and update the UI basically what we do with the UI is avatar set source to this name we are getting robot picture from somewhere and when you change this parameter it creates a new robot or gives you a new robot and then we are uh, changing the set 
INET uh, DEX. So let's see what happens when we reload. Yeah, so yeah, it works. So we have we have Sona here, and we can put my nickname, and it changed. Also, my picture changed, right? So not so much code for doing this stuff. So let's go to the step nine. Adding local storage component. Yeah, this is very interesting because if you go to the UI, for using local storage, we just have to, to use this element. So Polymer gives you the iron local storage. You set the name and also you have to, to set the name of the, of the object uh, stored in the local storage, the, Java, the JavaScript object stored there. And this is the, the UI file we need in, in Wit. So let's go here and how do we use the local storage. So basically we have an iron local storage <coughs> element which is provided in the Wit polymer elements dot jar of course and then when we have some utility functions like polymer ready when the store is ready so we reload the preferences and in reloading the preferences we have uh, some stuff here for creating a new preference file if we don't have anyone and we what we are creating is just a JSON object with the new JS interrupt it will the syntax will, will be uh, easier and then we use all the 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 methods that the Wit Polymer Elements library gave us. So one for set the nickname, another for set the value. Because we have created this preferences class here. It's nothing but an interface, so everything ha happens in the, in the... Also we have a, here a static list of robots, so as the first time you go to the application, it takes a new name from the from the list then you can chain it so yeah it works and when we reload yeah I have in my local storage my name because I used previously but then I can chain it by Manolo it's my short name and when I reload Manolo is there okay so I am using the local storage with in, in an easy way. Let's go with the next step. So now we need something for writing new messages. We are running, we have five minutes to finish the application. And let's see what, what we did. Basically what we did is, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, we have something like it. Paper, paper material. So we have the div with the messages, right? And then we have this pap paper material. Uh, it should be something like this. So we have a box with shadows, and in the in the in the box we have an input for writing, typing our message, and also we have a paper fab is a button. This button in paper in in, in material design very typical in Android, so let's reload and see what happens. So we have here our input and our button. Okay, so we have added some logic here as well for handling the, uh, let me refresh, something is, okay. Uh, we have created a new class is message is as well a JS type so we can create JavaScript or JSON objects directly using JS interrupt and we have created some logic for for that so when let me see da, 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 da. when the message input uh, we are listening to the key, key app and when we see the key enter we run the send 
Also, we have added this uh, the send method to the send button, which is the paper fab button we have in the in the UI. And this, what the send does is basically is create a, da, 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 <coughs> create a new message. So we have here create a new message. It's a JavaScript object set something like the owner and the text, and finally. Uh, uh, show the message in the console and it, it's happening so when I write here and I click the button I see my message in the console or when I type in enter also so let's go to the next step which is something like replace mock message with an iron list so if you remember we had in the main We have this mess mock message, right? We have maintained the same DOM structure, but we have added this <coughs> special syntax for uh, from Polymer, which is that we are using an iron list, and the iron list has a call the, uh, for each element in the list that we are going to add to the iron list. It calls item in each iteration so the the magic here is that we have a template template is a tag in, in supported in all the browser and it's hidden but uh, iron list is able to read this and to repeat this structure in the in the in each iteration right so if we go to our UI and reload we don't have any message because we have an empty list right we have we have here a list it's an array list and we set the list in the <coughs> uh, yes, array list what is the I don't list element is messages so somewhere we are updating the messages okay so messages set items to the list okay <laughs> and then we scroll so for the iron list we have several methods like a scroll to etc so this is the the work that with polymer elements does mm -hmm. so if we write here we have new messages coming to the ui and when we reload everything is lost uh, uh, is lost <coughs> so let's go to store this stuff somewhere so adding patch db backend so basically we are adding this tag here but in patch <coughs> db so i don't uh, sorry polymer doesn't have a wrapper for the patch db but i have done it in the in my in my repository uh, in github so you can install something like uh, bower install sorry Bower install Bower install Manolo but in patch DB and then if I run that I create this this folder <coughs> with this stuff. Basically I have my patch DB wrapping the uh, the patch DB JS uh, library, right? Then when I run something like with generator, it parses that and creates the varying pouch DB element, which we are using. So it's as easier as that. And by, uh, finally, in the main Java, we are using the, the patch DB is DB. Let's refresh. OK, I am finished. And yeah, we are using the post for for posting uh, the message. The message is the same that before. It's a JavaScript object. So when I reload it, <coughs> let's see everything works. So we have some stuff because I have been playing with my uh, my patch DB. Is my database in my in JavaScript, which is storing data in my browser, right? So I can continue writing and. The thing is that it is local to this browser, so it's an 
yeah, it's a local application and it's not being uh, uh, synchronized synchronized with the with the. So my application is finished. The next step is connect my application with a real database. So I have a catch DB instead of patch DB in my in my computer. Sorry, it, this is a new step. It was for adding a budget, and um, let's see what's happening. Something demo. Okay, let's continue. What is happening? Okay, so now we are connecting to with the internet. The other pay, uh, uh, step was adding this budget here for a number of, of messages. And basically what ha we have done is connect to the database in this, we change it. Instead of using the chat, we had chat before and now we have this, uh, this database in my local computer, right? And the final step should be something like changing this for by a cloud <coughs> and big couch <coughs> instance. This is a couch DB instance in, in the in the cloud. So it's provided by IBM. IBM supports Apache uh, Couch DB. So it's a production ready database. And now we are using my my version in the in the in the web. So this is everything I wanted to to show you. And now if we are running out of the out of time. So if you have some questions, please. Thank you.